Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor More, and welcome to another one of our real estate investing videos. Today, we're talking about Joe Biden and his proposal to get rid of the 1031 exchange. Now, I have used the 1031 exchange a few times, so we'll talk about that, what it is, and why it's important to real estate investors, and why there was so much um, outrage from real estate investors about getting rid of it. Now, first off, um, this is sort of a political video. I'm not going to get into politics. So you're welcome to comment below and yell and scream at each other, but I will not be participating in those conversations, but I'm happy to answer questions and try and um, clear up anything in this video that I may have missed. Of course, we like the likes <laughs> and new subscribers, so welcome. So keep those coming and um, make sure you check out investformore.com for much more information on our flips, rentals, being an agent, wholesaling, all of that good stuff. All right, so what exactly is a 1031 exchange? We will start with that. I have done two of them. So on one two, 1031 exchange, I sold a rental property for about 275000 I had bought that for 97000 if you can believe that. I bought it in 2010, sold it last year in 2019. So not all this was profit, but I had a really good chunk of profit from that property. So basically, when you're taxed, you know, you're taxed on what you sell it for, minus all of your expenses, um, and that what's left over is what you're taxed with. So this is 178,000, but I had selling expenses, we did some repairs, some different things. So just to make it easy, we'll say I was gonna profit $150,000 on this sale. Now, if I just sold this property and did not do a 1031 exchange, I would pay taxes on that $150,000 sale. Now it would be long-term capital gains taxes, um, either 15 or 20%, depending on your income bracket. Of course, talk to an accountant for all those specifics and what it, how it works for you. Um, I am not a tax expert, but I know how taxes work in real estate a little bit. Um, but you pay taxes on all of that profit. So, I mean, that could be $30,000 in taxes you're paying there. And I even have a 1031 exchange tax calculator on my site, if you wanna see that, on investformore.com, I'll link to that. There's also tons of information on 1031 exchanges on my site as well, and we have videos that show the properties I did 1031 exchanges on, so I will link to all of that below too. So you've got this $30,000 in taxes you might owe, but that's not it, because you can depreciate this property when you own it. In fact, you have to depreciate it. So with a residential rental, you depreciate it over 27 and a half years. How they came up with that, I don't know, but they did. So every year, you can deduct 127 and a half of the value of the structure of the property from your taxes. So if we say the value was 75,000, you divide that by 127 and a half, you get a couple thousand dollars. So if I own this property for nine years, you know, I might have another $20,000 of recaptured depreciation that I now have to pay taxes on. So I saved all that on my taxes while owning the property, but when I sell, I recapture it, it comes back. Again, it's usually a lower tax rate than what I would have paid had I not had depreciation. So it's still an advantage to have depreciation even when you sell, but you know, you're starting to add up to a pretty hefty tax bill here uh, when you add all of this together. The 1031 exchange allows you to make this all disappear. <laughs> so basically what you do is I sold this property for 275,000 and I bought a property for, I think it was $592,000 in 2019. This was a commercial property this was residential. A lot of people say, oh, you can't exchange a commercial for residential. Yes, you can. You're supposed to have like kind exchanges. Anything in real estate is considered a like kind exchange. You can go commercial, residential. I could sell five properties and exchange them into one. I could sell one property and exchange them into five. There are some rules, but basically, the new property you're buying has to be worth more than the properties you're selling. All your cash from the proceeds of this property have to go into this new one. 
So you can still get a loan on the new property, but any cash you make has to go in to that property and you can't hold it. A qualified intermediary has to hold all of your proceeds and use them for the new property. Now you've got 45 days to identify a new property from the time you sell and 180 days to actually buy it. So when I did my 1031 exchanges, I actually found the new property first, then I got it under contract as a commercial property so I could extend to a, a 90 day closing, and then I sold my residential property. So I had plenty of time to do everything. The trick was making sure this one sold fast enough, which we got done um, in order to buy the new one. So by doing that, when I sold this $275,000 property, I have no taxes owed, right? No capital gains, no recaptured depreciation. But all of those gains, the recaptured depreciation, all moves into the new property. So if I do sell this property in two years, you know, all that money is still gonna be owed. It doesn't just disappear. You don't restart your depreciation schedule. That um, all goes into the new property. And eventually, you know, if you keep exchanging and exchanging and exchanging, you're building up bigger and bigger tax liabilities if you do sell, unless you hold them forever, pass away, and then they're inherited by your heirs, then those tax liabilities disappear. Or you get into an opportunity zone, which is an entirely different video and much more complicated. But we did buy a property with one of those too. So, um, big advantage to real estate investors to use a 1031 exchange. Now this is a small dollar deal. There are people doing hundreds of millions of dollars of 1031 exchanges, saving them tens of millions of dollars in taxes. So for Biden to propose getting rid of the 1031 exchange, it was a big deal for a lot of people. And will it happen is one question, but what would happen if it does go into effect is another one. So I looked it up. The 1031 exchange was enacted in 1921. So it's been around for a very long time. And what it does is it encourages investment in real estate, right? If you know you can buy and sell properties without paying huge tax gains, you're more likely to buy more real estate. You're more likely to sell, buy new properties, move up. It encourages the market to have more sales, more transactions, which helps the economy. And that's why real estate has such amazing tax advantages in the United States, because I think the United States has always realized real estate helps drive the economy. Whenever someone buys a house, they're paying real estate agents, they're paying contractors, title companies, attorneys, lenders. Um, there's so many moving parts and so many things that just push the economy. And we saw the last housing crash, what happened when the housing market tanks, it can take down the whole economy with it. So in the history of the United States, real estate has been an amazing way to help the economy grow. And the 1031 exchange has been a pretty big part of it. So if it did go away, I think it would definitely slow down the real estate market, hurt investment, especially commercial real estate, especially maybe multifamily properties where you have almost all investors purchasing them. Now, for owner occupant, you have great tax rules too, we'll talk about here soon, but they don't have anything to do with the 1031 exchange, so you don't have to worry. But let's think about if this will actually happen. So here are some things to consider. NAR is the National Association of Realtors, has one of the biggest lobbies in the country. They will fight tooth and nail to keep the 1031 exchange. They fought tooth and nail to keep a lot of other tax advantages in the last tax bill that was proposed and then signed off on. I do not think there's any way that with the amount of real estate investors that are in this country, the NAR lobby, the most wealthy people in this country almost all own a lot of real estate. I don't think there's any way that ever gets removed from the tax code. Now I can't say I'm 100% sure, but just because Biden proposes it now, um, well before he's elected, if he is elected or not elected, does not mean it should be scaring everybody into thinking it's gonna go away, right? Even if he does get elected, even if he does push it forward, wants it in his tax bill, it has to get through Congress, has to get through Senate, 
has to get past all these lobbies and all these other real estate investors who probably really, really, really like that tool. And I think in the end, before it even gets too far, he'll probably stop talking about removing that exchange. Now, I could be wrong, but um, that is my opinion on how this will happen. So, and just to illustrate, you know, in the last tax bill that was proposed, there were a ton of things that got all the way through Congress, even through the Senate, but they didn't make it to the final tax bill because there's so much pushback on them. One of them was if you are an owner occupant and you live in a house two out of five years and you sell that house, you have a tax free gain of $250,000 or $500,000. If you're a couple, so if you're a single person, so you can buy a house for $100,000, sell it for $300,000, live there two years. That gain is tax free, no capital gain taxes. You don't do a 1031 exchange, you don't have to do anything, it's just how the tax rule works. Well, the last, last tax bill, there's a big push to either get rid of this or make you live there five out of eight years. So a lot of talk about that. A lot of people were angry about that and it didn't make it through. They got rid of it. They pushed that out. It stayed exactly the same. So there were some tax differences um, in the last bill for real estate investors that helped them and hurt them, but really no crazy major changes that affect most people. So while this can be scary, it makes good headlines. I don't think it's realistic that the 1031 exchange will go away anytime soon. Maybe I'll be proved wrong, we'll see. But I think there's just too many real estate investors, too many powerful real estate people to let that happen. And there's such a massive amount of money in the real estate industry, especially in big dollar commercial, multifamily properties, that so much money can be pushed into lobbying and uh, pushing against that idea that it would never pass. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. Uh, like I said, leave the comments below. If you have questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm not getting into any political squabbles either way, but um, I know this will probably happen. All right, of course, check out investormore.com and we have nine books on Amazon as well if you're looking for more in-depth information on real estate. Thanks.